Could Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, have copied his text from another source? Could the Holy Quran be inspired by Satan? The Holy Quran is standing proof of the truthfulness of Islam. Anyone who thoroughly examines the text of the Holy Quran will conclude that no one, including the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, could have authored this book, as no human being could produce anything like it. Thus, the text could only come from God, the Almighty, the All-Wise. The Holy Quran stands as the eternal miracle of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, providing the truthfulness and the very basis of his prophethood. Past prophets performed miracles to prove their own prophethood, but the manifestations of all of these miracles ended with their deaths, as they were prophets who served their people only. Since Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last prophet and is meant to be followed until the end of time, the manifestation of his miracle needs to last until this time, so the people who live after him can see his miracle and believe in his prophethood. Therefore, the Holy Quran remains preserved and exists today just as it did more than 1400 years ago. For many reasons, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, could not have been the earthly author of the Holy Quran. Let us now examine some clear proof of this edict. First, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not know how to read or write, nor did he attend any schools or travel outside the Arabian Peninsula. So, the Holy Quran was sent down to an unlettered prophet who did not read, write, or calculate. He had no education or communication skills to demonstrate to the people that he could not have authored the holy text. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would not have possessed the ability to compose a book that became the masterpiece of the Arabic language. The Holy Quran is inimitable in style, form, and spiritual impact. It has a unique rhythm, tone, rhyme, and genre like no other book. The Holy Quran contains the highest possible standard of linguistics and rhetoric in its speech, to the extent that it would be impossible for a human or group of humans to produce. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not known to compose poetry, nor did he like it. If Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were lying about his illiteracy, his enemies would have known. This owing to the fact that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, grew up in the same city, Mecca, as many of his enemies. You, O Prophet, could not read any writing even before this revelation, nor could you write at all. Otherwise, the people of falsehood would have been suspicious. Quran, chapter 29, verse 48. The question remains, how could Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, have been the author of the Holy Quran when he lived in the midst of the Arabian desert with no teachers or libraries? After all, the Arabic Peninsula existed as a backward, antiquated nation then. The Holy Quran references a variety of forward-thinking facts, resources of knowledge, and various sciences that people could not have known at the time and place in which the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his companions existed. The Holy Quran contains knowledge, guidance, and helpful information to explain complicated matters about inheritance, civil law, criminal law, history, finance, business, tax law, military law, embryology, labor law, real estate law, family law, dietary laws, psychology, raising children, marriage, worship, oceanography, biography, universe, physics, medicine, astronomy, and more. It presents this information using simple speech and imagery in Arabic with no errors or contradicting principles. Moreover, the Holy Quran uses terminology and descriptions at an advanced level beyond what a 7th century person living in the desert would know. Early biographical reports state that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was known in his community as truthful and trustworthy due to his early reputation for displaying these qualities. He never was accused of telling a solitary lie. The Holy Quran is the greatest miracle of God and contains a recounting of thousands of miracles to prove its godly origins. It is a lofty statement for any book to claim to contain the official word of God. Without clear evidence, or with one contradiction found within the book, the apparent word of God would be proven false. Yet, the Holy Quran does not contain any contradictions, nor is any information confirmed to be incorrect. 
Also, disproving the idea that this book could not have come from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or any person or group of people for that matter, is the fact that the Holy Quran contains hundreds of scientific facts later confirmed to be accurate years after the book was revealed, proving its divine origin. This book came from a higher power. The Holy Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the 7th century to an illiterate man living in the desert, at a time when no telescopes, microscopes, or anything resembling the symbols of advanced modern technology existed. However, as popular faith in Islam continued to grow century after century, humanity evolved into the age of modern science. In this era, many scientific discoveries have occurred to confirm certain verses of the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran, for example, states every living thing is made from water. It was not until years after its publication, after the invention of the microscope, that scientists confirmed this fact, that every living thing consists primarily of water. Also notable is the fact that the Holy Quran addresses the evolution of the human embryo in the mother's womb in chronological order. And in a time where many humans initially thought that the world was flat, the Holy Quran references the earth as being shaped like an ostrich egg, which is geospherical. Whereas people initially believed that the moon casts its own light, the Holy Quran references the fact that the moon's light is not natural to this celestial being, but instead takes the form of reflected light, a point scientists have confirmed to be accurate. The Bible, on the other hand, relayed the original mistaken perception. This is because the Bible contains words of men and not God. The Holy Quran references the idea that God made mountains in the form of pegs, much like those objects that hold up tents. Mountains stand tall to provide the earth stability, preventing the planet from shaking, much like pegs stand to offer stability to a tent. Like tent pegs, mountains bear deep roots embedded in the earth. The Holy Quran also contains a dialogue of a queen ant who warns her community against the dangers of being stepped on. And we now know that the animals whose life cycles most closely resemble our own are none other than ants. They routinely meet and communicate in their nests with the queen ants issuing instructions. Here, I have outlined only a few of the many scientific miracles presented in the Holy Quran. Conduct an internet search to learn about many others that exist. How could an illiterate man living in the desert possess such advanced knowledge at the historical time in which he lived, unless this knowledge came from above? The intricate detailing of linguistic and scientific miracles are not the only evidence presented in the Holy Quran that disproves Prophet Muhammad's, peace be upon him's, authorship, as the book also contains many prophecies that have since come true. In addition, the Holy Quran provides many predictions related to future events. In truth, all these Quranic predictions manifested as predicated. Among the many accurate futuristic predictions in the Quran is the bold claim that the Byzantine Empire would reign victorious over the Persian Empire. The Holy Quran stated that the body of the Pharaoh who lived in the time of the Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, would be preserved as a sign for those who came after him. His body was discovered in 1898 and is now kept in a museum. In the early 70s, his corpse was examined. An examination conducted through an investigation of his mummy concluded that he had died from water infiltration into his lungs, providing conclusive proof of a drowning death. The examination also revealed that he lived at the time of Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. The Holy Quran predicted and promised that Muslims would re-enter the sacred house of Allah, Mecca, victoriously in a state of security. This later came true in the eighth year of the Hijra. Many other prophecies fill the Holy Quran. For instance, God's claim that he would safeguard and protect his final book to humanity, the Holy Quran, from human-made alterations or any form of corruption. Nevertheless, the Holy Quran remains in the same way it was revealed, letter by letter. The Holy Quran also contains God's claim that he rendered the text easy to memorize. Today, Millions of people have memorized the entire book successfully, which includes more than 600 pages, regardless of their ethnicity and language. No other scripture or book on earth is equally easy to memorize. 
The Holy Quran prophesizes future happenings and tells many stories of past events, nations, and prophets, such as the stories of Prophet Joseph, Moses, and Jesus, peace be upon them. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, lived in the middle of the desert with not a library in sight, as the Arabic Peninsula was a backward, antiquated nation at the time. He was unlettered and grew up among illiterate idol worshippers without knowledge of the previous scriptures. He had no way of reading or conjuring these stories shared in the Holy Quran. That is from the news of the unseen which we reveal to you, O Muhammad. You knew it not, neither you nor your people before this. So be patient. Indeed, the best outcome is for the righteous. Quran, chapter 11, verse 49. The idea that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, copied stories from the Old and New Testament is not a logical one, because if he did indeed replicate the stories from these sources, then he would have copied those passages of the Bible that were accurate, as well as the parts that were not accurate. The Bible contains thousands of errors and contradictions, but you don't see any of those errors reflected in the pages of the Holy Quran. In addition, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, lacked direct access to the previous books. The Old Testament in Arabic did not arrive in the Arabian Peninsula until 200 years after the departure of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Arabic New Testament did not arrive until a thousand years afterward. For those who think that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, might have fabricated his prophethood for worldly gain, it is imperative to realize that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his companions, and his family underwent many years of persecution, hardship, boycott, exile, and lost kinship because they believed in and spread the message of God, just like the past prophets of God and their followers. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was denied food, had dirt thrown upon him, and was even pelted with stones because he was spreading the word of God. Still, he remained persistent, even while witnessing the persecution and torture of his family and friends. The prophets of God did not come down in search of worldly gain. They wanted only to spread the word of God, causing them great hardship, and material gain was never their objective, nor did they accept it. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not compose the Holy Quran for riches, as he was married to the wealthiest woman in Mecca. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, lived a simple, humble, and frugal life, sitting and sleeping on a mat on the floor, mending his clothes, and he died without money because he did not pursue or care for the materialistic lifestyle. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was offered exalted leadership roles and wealth to halt his spread of the message of God, but he refused because he didn't care for power or government leadership. Contrary to what some believe, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not write the Holy Quran to attempt to unite the Arabs. The Holy Quran does not contain any verses that talk about uniting the Arabs and only conveys the concept of uniting the Muslim nation of all races. It's not reasonable to believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, wrote the Holy Quran when it contains verses that admonish Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Why would Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, write a book where he admonished himself, undermining his position of authority? The Holy Quran states about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, He frowned and turned his attention away simply because the blind man came to him interrupting. You never know, O Prophet. Perhaps he may be purified, or he may be mindful, benefiting from the remainder. Quran, chapter 80, verses 1-4 through four. It is not fit for a prophet that he should take captives until he has thoroughly subdued the land. You believers settled with the fleeting gains of this world, while Allah's aim for you is the hereafter. Allah is almighty, all-wise. Quran, chapter 8, verse 67. And you feared the people, while Allah has more right that you fear him. Quran, chapter 33, verse 37. O oh, Prophet, why do you prohibit yourself from what Allah has made lawful for you, seeking to please your wives? And Allah is all-forgiving, most merciful. Quran, chapter 66, verse 1. The Holy Quran has a verse where Allah commands Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to communicate to his followers that he, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, 
only follows what is revealed to him. He was letting his followers know that the commands were coming from God and not from himself, and that he was only a warner. Say, I am not the first messenger ever sent, nor do I know what will happen to me or you. I only follow what is revealed to me, and I am only sent with a clear warning. Quran, chapter 46, verse 9. At the age of approximately 60, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had a son, whom he named Abraham. Unfortunately, Abraham became ill and passed away. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was in pain, crying about the passing of his son. At that time, the sun eclipsed, a full solar eclipse in which the moon passed between the sun and earth, completely blocking the face of the sun in the daytime while causing the sky to darken as if it were dawn or dusk. Rumors started to spread around Medina that even the sky was suffused with sadness regarding the death of the Prophet's son, Abraham. When Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, buried his son, he called the people to the mosque. They prayed, after which Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, stood up and stated to his people, Verily, the sun and the moon are signs of Allah's existence. They do not eclipse on account of the death or birth of anyone. This is a powerful demonstration that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a true prophet. If he or anyone was truly a false prophet and this happened to him, they would have taken advantage of the moment and not hastened to correct the rumors. However, since he was indeed the true prophet of God, he had to speak the truth and tell the people that the eclipse played no role in the death of his son. Satan is the sworn enemy of humanity, who has been granted respite until the day of judgment. He tries to tempt human beings to sin, glamorize sin, and deceive humanity into deterring them from remembrance and obedience to God. Those who think Satan authored the Holy Quran, or that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was inspired to write it by Satan, probably have never read it. This is simply an absurd claim, for many reasons. The Holy Quran arrived in the Arabian Peninsula when the people of Mecca were devoted to idol worship. The period, at the time, spawned ignorance, foolishness, and misguidance. The Holy Quran and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came down telling the wayward people to leave their idol worship and worship the one true God, thus empowering them to avoid hellfire and enter paradise. Why would Satan write a book or inspire Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to call upon idol worshippers to stop worshipping false idols and worship the one God? It would be highly counterproductive to do so. Idol worshipping carves the path to hell, and worshipping the one true God is the path to paradise. Satan would not want humanity to depart the path of hell and instead take the path of paradise. A verse in the Holy Quran tells us to seek refuge in Allah from Satan, the accursed, before we start reading the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran warns us that Satan is our clear enemy and advises us not to follow in his footsteps. Whoever does so enjoins immorality and wrongdoing. The Holy Quran portrays Satan as an arrogant, racist, disobedient, and ungrateful liar. Why would Satan curse himself and command people to turn away from him, worshipping God instead? The Holy Quran is filled with verses commanding people to be good and fair, to help the poor, to pray and fast, and to perform other good acts. The Holy Quran commands people to speak kindly, politely, graciously, fairly, with justice, and without lying. The Holy Quran forbids adultery, drinking alcohol, gambling, violence, usury, stealing, dishonesty, murder, and many other illicit acts Satan tempts humanity to commit. So why would Satan command society to do good and prohibit them from doing what is not good? The Holy Quran challenges anyone who doubts the book's divine origins to produce another sacred text equal in merit a text that matches its eloquence, power, style, and language and is free from error and contradictions. Any document that claims to include the Word of God bears a heavy burden. Without clear evidence, or with the presence of even one contradiction within the book, the apparent Word of God would be proven false. The Holy Quran is devoid of contradictions and contains no information confirmed to be incorrect, even though the whole text was not revealed at once. 
Instead, it was revealed orally over a 23-year period, piece by piece, with each passage coming down in the wake of a current event happening in the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his early companions, without the benefit of an editorial process to amend its content. Allah made it clear that no one will ever be able to produce anything comparable to the Holy Quran, not even one chapter like it, thus affirming another prophecy of the Holy Quran. This challenge stands unchallenged, with no one writing a text comparable to the Holy Quran, not even during the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, when Arabs emerged as masters of the Arabic language, according to historians and linguists. And if you are in doubt about what we have sent down upon our servant, Muhammad, then produce a surah, chapter, the like thereof, and call upon your witnesses other than Allah, if you should be truthful. Quran, chapter 2, verse 23. What fallible human, or group of humans for that matter, would write a book of more than 600 pages and challenge humanity to find contradictions or discrepancies within its pages? Everything in the Holy Quran is true, with no evidence of contradictions or falseness. It will remain in perfect form for eternity because it is the Word of God, who is perfect and makes no mistakes. If this book were from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or a group of people, or Satan, it would contain mistakes, errors, and contradictions, this owing to the fact that everyone except God is fallible. In comparison, the Bible is filled with falsehoods and contradictions, making it clear that its text has been tampered with by human hands and is not the word of God. Then do they not reflect upon the Quran? If it had been from any other than Allah, they would have found within it much contradiction. Quran, chapter 4, verse 82.